Now the Moto G has been the king of budget phones for quite a while and Motorola looks to take that to the next level with the Moto G4 and the G4 Plus. Now both devices look very similar but they have some differences that actually set them apart. In terms of build and look, at first glance, G4 on the left, G4 Plus on the right, looks the same, right? But we'll get into some of the details that make them different. As always, you can customize these devices on Monomaker and build them to your own specifications, which is nice. Now, taking a look at the hardware build, we've got, of course, just basic units provided to us by Motorola. And you can see it's got a plastic back cover, um, which, of course, is you can flip open, remove. You've got that dimple at the back, a metal build around, a nice 5.5-inch uh, display, 1080p display, which is similar for both devices here. Rear camera, front face camera now with the Moto uh, G4 Plus here some of the differences that you see clearly of course it's got a fingerprint sensor in front but let's take a look at the hardware now the G4 itself has a 30 megapixel shooter at the back Snapdragon 670 processor 2 gigs of RAM can come in 16 or 32 gigabyte variants expandable via micro SD up to 30 uh, sorry to 128 it's got a 1080p display a 5 megapixel front facing camera there's no fingerprint sensor on this device and that's pretty much it. Now the G4 Plus here has the 60 megapixel, 60 megapixel shooting in the back. It's got, uh, in terms of RAM, you can go up to four gigs of RAM uh, with it. You can go up to 64 gigabytes of storage, 32 or 64. Fingerprint sensors in the front. It's got a five megapixel front facing camera, similar to the G4 and a 1080p display. That fingerprint sensor is really uh, active and works pretty well. So. Pricing also helps set both devices apart. The Moto G4 is priced at $199 or $229 for either 16GB or 32GB variants, while the Moto G4 Plus is priced at $249 or $299 for either the 32 or the 64GB with 4 gigs of RAM. Now, there are unique things that you find with this device once you actually take a look underneath the hood. They both have 3000 milliamp batteries and they also have SIM trays here. Now, the SIM trays are unique because it comes also with a uh, nano SIM adapter. So uh, something unique with most budget devices that they usually still use uh, micro SIM. So the fact that you can have uh, a nano SIM adapter, you can switch between SIMs is very, very useful, which I like. Now in terms of performance, so the, now looking at just what you get here, you're getting a stock Android feel, which is very standard with Motorola nowadays. So I'm looking at the Moto G4 Plus here. And as we go through, we can see some of the options that you have on this device in terms of just our functionality here. You have some gestures in the display. You can go take a look at what we have for version of Android here, which would be Android 6.0. Uh, point one, uh, 6.01, 6.01, sorry. Uh, so you have all those things built in and you just get a really smooth performance, either on the G4 Plus or the G4. So I like that that is a, a staple and has continued over uh, with the G4 line from Motorola. Now, in terms of just both devices and how they function, they really function the same. I think you get the same performance altogether. You've got a 617 processor in both. Now, it depends on what RAM variant you go with. Now, if you're going with a 64 gigabyte, uh, a 64 gigabyte storage, and four gigs of RAM like we have here with the Moto G4, you're gonna to get, to get a slightly better experience when it comes to gaming. So you're paying more for that RAM. You're paying an extra 100 bucks or $50, uh, depending on what you're getting, but 100 bucks for four gigs of RAM. And let's take a look at some gaming off the G4 Plus. <laughs> So it handles well in game performance. That 1080p display also still looks good. And the audio from the speakers, because the speakers are actually in the very top grill right there, uh, is really, really solid. Now moving over to the camera. Now both of these devices have two different cameras and we'll take a look at each one. But the camera apps are both the same here. So you have a very simplistic app. It's modeled around, of course, the Google camera itself. You can change uh, your uh, megapixels, things like that. Uh, but nothing too crazy and records at 1080p. So let's start first by taking a look at some video and images captured from the Moto G4 and then we move over to the Moto G4 Plus.
here with the Moto G4. Now you know this has, of course, a 13 megapixel shooter. I'm recording 1080p, about 30 seconds. Give you guys a general idea of the audio, also while I'm walking, um, how well it handles, you know, shaky and all that stuff. And then we'll move on from here to the G4 Plus. Uh, but you get a good idea of the camera, the microphone quality, picking up audio, especially as I'm talking, and also photos. So we'll compare and look at photos for each device and that kind of fun stuff. Now when it comes to capturing images, the Moto G4 does a decent job in daylight. That 30 megapixel shooter is all right. Nothing crazy or fantastic here. As you can see, uh, it's got a dollar look to the colors here in terms of capturing with the amount of sunlight that was out there. Um, also, you can see it's a little bit fuzzy in the background, but you still capture images well enough. Now, this is one area Motorola needs to definitely improve in camera. But again, this device here you're looking at is priced at 199 or 229 depending on which variant you're picking up now when we go to low light photography this is where of course uh, it doesn't really do well now this photo is taken in low light HDR plus is on um, but we have an increased exposure one of the tricks of course is to increase the exposure before you take the picture so you can get some more lighting into the environment so here's another image with increased exposure here and uh, it still doesn't do a good job this is something you don't want to take low light photos definitely use the flash uh, that will help you with this device now let us move over to the Moto G4 Plus. Give me a quick camera recording from G4 Plus. The first thing of course is you can change the exposure as I'm doing right now so I'm resetting it and I'm actually gonna walk down. Now we'll do about 30 seconds so you guys get a good idea audio for the microphone while recording as well as how well it works while you're walking down and how OIS kicks in if there's any that type of stuff that we usually do but giving you a general idea of what this camera actually does. Now this 60 megapixel shooter off the Moto G4 Plus does a better job at capturing and giving much more vibrant colors uh, with uh, the camera here. So you can see Captain America looks just a little bit brighter and the greens also pop out a little bit more. Uh, there is less fuzziness in the background uh, like you saw with the 30 megapixel shooter of the G4. So the improved camera here is also a big plus for me. The fact that of course we the, this is probably the only camera you will own if you're gonna buy a smart phone so that also makes a lot of sense now as we move over to low light photography here it's HDR on without the exposure actually moved and it's done a better job at capturing now the stock rate you can see a lot of uh, granulation a lot of pixel not pixelation but granulation in the image but once we pop that exposure up a little bit more you can see how it does in taking photos now it's a brighter image of course there's more granulation but if you just really want to capture an image you can do that we still with both cameras it is best to actually use the flash and it's and of course from all indication it looks like the 60 megapixel shooter on the G4 Plus does a better job. Now, some of you would ask me, how about front facing photos? Now, both of them have the same 5 megapixel camera. So, here's just a single image taken from the 5 megapixel uh, uh, camera in the front. And you can see there, in, in um, regular lighting, it does a good job. It's still very granulated at the edges, as you can see at the edge of my. Uh, of the picture itself, but it does a good job capturing and you can see uh, your image clearly. So spending time with both devices, with the G4 Plus you can see there and the Moto G4. I have to say Motorola has done a solid job in making this a device that if you're looking for a budget phone, you should definitely pick up. Now the G4 does a good job, solid performance at its price range, and you can pick it up from Amazon for actually less if you're a Prime member at 149 or 179 for 16 or 32 gigabyte variants. I like the performance of the G Plus, uh, G4 Plus better because the uh, more RAM there actually helps for gaming, as well as also the fact that uh, the camera does a slightly better job and you do have a fingerprint sensor. So if you were to pick one, I would say the Moto G4 Plus, but it is priced at $300 for that four gigabyte variance with 64 gigs of RAM. So overall, I, I have to say though, I like both devices. I like what Motorola has done. Motorola has really captured that budget space, but now they're trying to move that price up. And we'll have to see how it competes in the market to other devices. But right now, the G4 and the G4 Plus have, have done a really good job. And the one area they definitely need to improve is just pretty much the camera. It may feel bland and basic because Motorola doesn't add a lot of uh, features into it, but at that price, 
price point, you want something that's reliable, good, with updates, and works very well and has a history, which is what the Moto G line has, and they haven't failed here. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let us know. Don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank <laughs> you.